My name is Robin Shirley, and I am the founder of the Take Back Your Health Conference, and I started this conference as an inspiration for my friends and family. Um, I was going through a really difficult time with my health, and I was learning a lot from authors and teachers around the country, and I wanted to create an event where my family and friends could learn the same things that I was learning in a fun way, and then maybe they would decide that they wanted to um, start eating healthier as well. And I grew up in Virginia, and that's where I started the first conference. When I was 23, I started inviting speakers to come in. We got a hotel, and we got vendors, and we just had our first Take Back Your Health conference there. So um, by happy accident, it was a really successful event. I had no experience with it, and people wanted me to keep doing it. So I have continued to host this conference. And about two years ago, I moved to Los Angeles for a few reasons. I moved over here because I, um, I felt a, a draw, a pull to come to Los Angeles for some reason. I couldn't really explain it. Um, but I also knew that I needed to do some business out here and bring the conference here. And it felt like the right move for the company at that time. And it turned out that it was. Um, it's been really wonderful being here and a lot of um, exhibitors and speakers and people coming to the conferences have really loved it and they're working with me to help it grow in the next few years. So this is the second one that we've done here and um, I'm really happy that you all are here. So I want to this morning tell you guys more about the story leading up to this conference, what I went through and hopefully share with you guys what I've learned about um, how to take back your health and actually what you can do when your doctor doesn't know what to do because so many of us are experiencing mysterious symptoms and we're struggling with getting healthy, losing weight, having energy and there are actually a lot of things that are going on in our environment and in our diet that we can work on and we can make a lot of improvements on our own at home. Um, I do want to um, just make sure that uh, you guys are aware that you should obviously check with your doctor before you make any major changes. Um, I think that should do it, no? Oh, I know what the problem is. Quick intermission, I gotta grab something and plug it in and then we'll be good to go. Okay, all right, so here it is. Just check with your doctor. I am talking about things you can do when your doctor doesn't know what to do. It's kind of a bold statement. And so I just want to make sure that you guys know that I am not a medical doctor. Um, I do give nutrition consultations and I'm certified in integrative nutrition. So that's my background with education and a lot of research on my own and trial and error, obviously. I've been working on this on my own for about 17 years now. So it started when I was I was 10 years old and I was uh, at summer camp and I came down with a fever and it was um, a rash and a fever and aches and pains. So it felt like the flu, the rash was a little mysterious, but basically we assumed it was the flu or some sort of infection I picked up at summer camp from the kids there. I came home and we were hoping it would go away. It kind of fluctuated every day. The fever went up or down. It wasn't um, something that stayed every day the same. So we felt like, oh, maybe it's you know, going to go away and stay away. Um, but the next week when my family went on a beach vacation, the rash got worse. Um, again, we thought it might be something in the ocean. My sister and her friend also got you know, the little sea lice or little red rashy thing. So again, we were thinking, well, maybe it was just being at the beach. So we came home. But unfortunately, it just continued to get worse and worse. And I got fever spiking up to 104 at times, I believe, 105 um, rash all over my body, just red splotches everywhere. And really, really painful joints and inflammation and fatigue. Um, I was sleeping a lot, and I wasn't able to go to school. So we had, uh, we had all these doctors trying to diagnose me, obviously. Um, they turned to Lyme disease to check and see if that was a problem because I was in Virginia. I was in the mountains in Virginia and the tick bite is a very natural um, conclusion to come to when you have those symptoms. The test came back negative and so we went on to other infectious disease doctors and then eventually we went on to Johns Hopkins rheumatology department and I ended up
at being diagnosed with systemic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which is also known as Stills disease sometimes. And it's basically systemic inflammation of the organs, joints, and skin. So that explains the rash, the fevers, and the joint inflammation and pain. Uh, and fatigue, obviously, when your immune system is working that hard. So I missed almost a third of the class, days of class in my seventh grade, um, and I continued to struggle. We were looking for treatments and medication that would work. I was pretty stable through high school, um, but it was still always an, an issue. Um, I had some flare-ups. In my senior year, I had a major flare-up, and I had to miss a lot of school. And then I went on to high school, and I mean, I went on to college. So the turning point is really in college, where I was experiencing so, such a bad flare-up that I couldn't walk to my classes. And I ended up missing so much class that I failed. I didn't fail, I got a D in a human anatomy course. I was taking pre-med courses at that time, and, um, and I actually ended up having such bad inflammation in my knees that I couldn't walk to class. So I missed classes and they knock off 10 points for every time they give you a surprise quiz and you miss it. So I had a D and I said, I have to, I have to take a break, I have to come home, I know I can heal myself and I know that nutrition is a big piece of that. And being at school, I was in a sorority, I was taking hard classes, I was staying up late, I was drinking too much, I was eating pizza at midnight and it was just, it was, it was a bad situation for my body. So we basically decided, my mom and I, that I could come home, take some time off, and really study what I could do to help my body heal. And um, I knew, I was so adamant about this because I had done an experiment earlier. Of course, I had experimented with natural health along the way. We tried organic, we tried juicing. We started juicing when I was 12, and um, we started going organic and just doing massage therapy and some different alternative treatments. But um, the one thing that really worked was uh, elimination diet. And I'm sure you guys have heard of this in, you know, maybe you're more familiar with it or maybe you're trying it yourself, but it's where you eliminate all of the common allergens out of your diet. And you actually um, see if any of those foods are causing the symptoms. So when you eliminate them out, then you go for a few weeks and you see if you feel better. And then you slowly introduce one at a time back in and see if those foods are causing the inflammation or a reaction in your body. So I tried this. I tried it in the summer one time between semesters and I actually experienced such relief from my symptoms that I was, I was feeling, I was almost to the point where I felt symptom free. My joints, they were swollen before, they calmed down, they looked a normal color, a normal size, and then I felt energy, the rash was completely gone, um, and I just, I felt like I had found the answer. Um, two or three uh, months after I started that, um, I actually ate some food that I wasn't eating and all my symptoms came back. I'll tell you the story, it's kind of a funny story. I went to Virginia Tech um, in Virginia, I grew up there, I told you, and the Virginia Tech shootings happened my first year, my freshman year of college there. And it was, um, it was obviously a very traumatic situation, but that's um, just a setup for what, what I'm about to tell you. Um, Dave Matthews and a bunch of wonderful artists came in and did a concert for the school the September after. The shootings happened in April, and it was, they canceled our finals, and we all stayed around for a few weeks, but then we went home, and coming back in the fall, um, they put on a concert for us and um, as kind of like, okay, let's get the energy back up. We're starting a new semester. And my sister's birthday coincided with that, con that concert. So she came down to Virginia Tech and I, got, I gave her my guest pass and, uh, and we had a little birthday celebration before the concert. I went and I got, I thought I was getting good food. I got gluten-free, dairy-free brownies from the health food store and I put candles in them. And, um, and we blew them out and we ate some brownies. And then we went to um, frat house where a lot of my guy friends were having like a ping pong or beer pong party before. And I did drink some beer. So in that one day, I had eaten three things that I had not been eating for a month. I ate chocolate, eggs, and beer. Or, and that's a problem because it has gluten in it. 
so it was gluten. And it also has yeast, which some people react to. So I had all of that all in one day. And the next day I woke up and my rash was back with a vengeance. All up and down, fiery red, sore, itchy. And I had um, the pain coming back in my joint. So at that moment, I just, I was like, wow, nutrition has that profound of an effect on my body. And I tried to maintain that diet for two and a half years, one and a half years before I decided that being at college and being in a sorority was not a conducive environment to eating that way and healing my body. So I did end up coming home. And I remember specifically, I was watching, um, oh my gosh, I was watching Desperate Housewives Atlanta on the Bravo channel in a hotel room in, um, Oh, that uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, at a fraternity's final or formals um, weekend, and I was sitting there because I was so I was so grossed out by the way everyone was acting. Um, I felt so out of place being in a sorority, and I felt um, just like I needed to. I was sitting there, and I felt I'm not I don't belong with these with these people at this time. It's not it's not really I'm not connecting with them. I don't feel like this is my place, and I. I started crying and I thought, I need to make a big change because this is not working for me. And I was at the same time watching the Desperate Housewives make fools of themselves on this show. So basically I just thought, what am I doing? I'm just filling my head and filling my life with things that aren't important to me right now. So that's when I, the very next weekend I believe, I actually went home to visit my parents. We were two and a half hours away, so I went home. And I stayed there the weekend and I just told her in the kitchen one day, I said, I really need to take some time off from school. I know that. I know that I can heal myself if I just give myself some time to focus. So I, I went home and I stayed with them for the next, I don't know, four, five, six years. And I really healed my body as much as I could. And it was, it was hard because um, I didn't know everything I needed to know. And over the course of those years and even beyond or before that, we spent a lot of money working on my health. A lot, a lot of money, a lot of time. And if I had known what I had known then, it would have happened a lot sooner. So I really want to share with you guys some of the things that I wish I had known when I knew them. Um, I think the turning point came when I was actually um, in the hospital one time. I, I was on, um, I was on, gosh, I was online. Sorry, I'm putting my neck. I was going to tell you about the infection that put me in the hospital, but I was online one day and um, on a meetup group, meetup.com, and it's a site where you can connect with people in your community that are interested in the same things as you. And on that website, I met someone who then um, came, became a friend of mine, and she really inspired me to go get retested for Lyme disease. Um, in that very same week that she pushed me to do that, I met a few other people who were being tested for Lyme disease, and I also, we found like two ticks on our cat that week, and it was just a lot of signs all at the same time that I should go get retested. So I got retested, and it turns out that they do think that I have Lyme disease. Now the testing is still very controversial, and it's a lot of clinical diagnosis that they have to do along with blood testing. So um, it's it's a very difficult diagnosis to make. But I do believe that infection of some sort, whether it's Lyme disease or something else that um, a tick was carrying when I got bit, um, because it makes sense. I never believed my doctors. They said. Well, I believed them, but this one aspect, they said, your immune system is wrong. In so many words, they said, your immune system is attacking your healthy cells. That's what autoimmune disease is. That's what systemic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis is. It's when your immune system attacks your healthy cells and your immune system is wrong. So the Western medicine, conventional medicine treatment is to stop the immune system from attacking those cells. And they gave me medication to do that all through high school and college. That's what the treatment was. That's why I was able to make it through schooling. But um, at some point, I just said, it really doesn't feel like that. There's got to be something in there. There's toxins, there's metals, there's infection, there's something, because my body isn't wrong. I just felt like that was so, in, it was not insulting, it was just so, it just felt wrong. My, my head was in a space of being um, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14. I was going through bi my intro to biology courses. And I knew what the immune system's job was. We were learning it right there. My textbook said the immune system's job is to fight infection and foreign invaders. So I knew. I knew. It didn't make sense that my doctor was saying that. Um, so that was always in the back of my head going through um, middle school and high school. And finally, I just said, that's it. It's not, 
my own body's fault. There's something in there that it's got to get out. So I knew deep down that it was some sort of infection or toxin, and I decided that I was going to um, go ahead and pursue that, and the Lyme disease thing kind of coincided. It just felt right. And then I look back, and I remember when my symptoms started, and I was at summer camp in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, which is one of the highest concentrated areas for Lyme disease in the country, that Appalachia mountain range all the way up to New York, actually, and it's just filled with Lyme disease. The diagnosis in that part of the country is just off the charts. So um, it made sense to me that that was the direction that I should turn to. And then from there, everything kind of clicked because I started to think, now I can approach this instead of just trying to do elimination diets and massage and relaxation and supplements. Now I actually can really focus in on fighting infection, helping my body to fight infection and helping my body to detox on a deeper level than I had ever even considered because obviously what I was doing before wasn't enough. So I started pursuing more um, intensive therapies that I hadn't really been um, confident enough to approach before, but I decided that it was really time. And one thing that I have learned since starting all of this is that oftentimes if you're that severely ill to the point where you're in the hospital for six weeks at a time because you have an infection in your throat that your immune system can't fight because it's so bogged down with other infections, then you really need to take drastic action. Um, if you're, you know, I was laying on my bed more time of 24 hour day than I was standing on my feet. And I was laying there and I just thought, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. You know, God didn't put me on this planet to lay in bed or, you know, I'm not here to lay in bed. I'm, I'm here to do something more, obviously, like we all are. It's not a satisfying life to be laying on the couch or depressed or tired all the time. So I just said, what does my life have to be like for it to be worth living? I was literally sitting there at one point just saying, this is not worth it. Like, there's no point. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Something has to change. And luckily, I'm the type of person that knows that I could make a difference. So, uh, so that was really where I decided I'm going to take drastic action. And I started looking into things, really intensive herbal treatments for the Lyme disease, um, more detoxification protocols like heavy metal chelation, which I talked about a little bit yesterday, and then more um, high doses of um, supplemental vitamins, minerals, and superfoods. So those were kind of the three areas that I really focused in on, and I just went more deep into all of them instead of just scratching the surface as I had before. So um, I'll go on now to more of those details, but basically, I, I, it was interesting. I was feeling so poorly, and then I all of a sudden made like a 50% jump when I did these drastic dietary changes. And then when I did the uh, herbal protocols for Lyme disease, it was like another 25% jump. So I was feeling 70% better. And then the final thing I really felt I needed to do was the heavy metal chelation. And I'm, I really feel like those three areas for my body is what helped me get to where I am. And I was actually three years ago, even after I started the first conference in 2011, three years ago, I, I started the application process for disability because that's how sick I felt still. Even after I started this conference, I was still struggling. And um, a year after I applied for disability, I had made such an improvement that I moved out of my parents' house and I moved to LA. And I did it myself. I packed everything up and I drove out here and I brought the company out here. And um, now being here for two years, I feel even better. I've continued the chelation protocol. I've continued to make changes to my diet and I've continued to um, do herbal protocols for infections, um, antimicrobial herbs. And now I'm feeling like, I've, I feel almost like a normal person again. It's, I like to show, I mean, this is kind of silly to do this, but I, I didn't used to be able to do this even. Like I couldn't, like I can go down here and sit here for four or five minutes. Most people can't even do that because it hurts too badly. And I can come back up and I can just keep going. And I couldn't even do, this was so painful before. I wasn't even strong enough, it just hurt. And this is such a natural position for the human just to be sitting down here. Like it's really actually good because it realigns your uh, digestive anatomy. It provides support to your stomach and your intestines and it strengthens your legs and your hips, and it stretches out your Achilles tendon. And it actually is like a really good exercise. You can build muscle like really quickly that way and get tone and definition there. So it just thrills me so much. And going up and down the stairs, it, it's like a blessing because I used to just have to grab onto the railing. There were times when I was crawling up the stairs, literally like taking them one at a time and on my knees because my feet were in so much pain. So just, 
I wanted to tell you guys that because I look like I'm very healthy now, but as recent as two or three years ago, I was applying for disability because I couldn't, couldn't work full time. And I was crawling up and down the stairs. So, so anyways, but the good news is, is that you can really improve your life. You can take away that pain. It takes time, and there are a lot of things that are affecting that pain and causing that pain. And it is integrative. It's really, um, it's really a six-fold approach, which I'm going to tell you guys about in a second. This is just a quick thing I want to bring because it's obviously a systemic problem in America. 324 million Americans and 18.9 million of them have asthma. Did you guys know that? That's a lot. That's a lot of people. 23 have autoimmune disease and 25 million have diabetes and 22 have arthritis. That's a lot of people that are dealing with pain and chronic illness on a daily basis. So the good news is though, like me, people are recovering every day. They're coming to conferences like this, they're going on retreats, they're talking to nutritionists and they're revamping their lifestyle. So it is possible but it requires a lot of emotional and mental resilience, which some people have more of and some people don't. And it takes a lot of willpower um, and a permanent lifestyle change, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's why I'm hosting these conferences twice a year. So tw twice a year, you guys can come back in, you can get inspired, you can be around people who are also working towards the same change and living the same way. And I'm doing retreats where you can come in and I can cook for you for four days in a row and you can really just be taught exactly how to do it. You can see me in the kitchen, see what I'm cooking and I'll be feeding you and you can experience how your body feels after four days. And then, um, and then I do an online blog so you can come and see me on video every day. So I'm really trying to show you guys that I'm living this lifestyle every day and I want to help you guys do it too so that it doesn't feel like you're alone. These are the six steps that I mentioned before, and I'm actually very excited about this. Okay, good, that's the next slide. So the first step for me, I believe, would be to eat nutritious foods because this is why. When you're eating foods that work against your body, you're, you're damaging your mental, emotional, and physical health because your food affects you on all three levels. And it's, it's, I didn't really think it was that profound, but I can see a difference. I mean, I'll give you an example right now. This is actually kind of a cool example. My roommate, um, is actually, I'm helping her, I'm facilitating a cleanse for her right now. She wanted to lose a lot of weight in a very short amount of time. And so we put on a very drastic diet. It's not necessarily what everyone needs, but she uh, was about 175 when she began, and now she's about 150-ish, and she wants to lose a few more pounds. But it happened in two and a half weeks. And it's because we starved her body. And she was a very unique case where that was okay to do. It's not okay for someone who's chronically ill. She was healthy, but she wanted to lose weight. So that was the approach we took. And now we're introducing more nutrition so that her body won't be starving itself, but it'll just be functioning at a higher level. But what I, I brought this up because what happened is she now has not only phys seen physical changes, but she's seen emotional changes and mental changes that she wasn't even expecting. She feels light mentally and emotionally. She feels happier every day. She's dating. She was like going on like two or three dates a week for like last week or the week before. And she's just so excited about everything. She's smiling more. Her, her daughter went up to her the other day and said, mom, you have stars in your eyes. And one of her friends came up and gave me a hug because she's just like, Robin, like she's been so down for a while and just thank you for being there for her and helping her. So it affects you on an emotional, mental level. I brought that up because when you're trying to make these changes, when you're trying to live a healthy lifestyle, you need to be happy and you need to be energetic emotionally and mentally too. So the food will give you energy physically, but it'll also clear up any emotional or mental um, effects that that food is having on you. So if you're eating lots of sugar or you're eating chemicals or dairy that might be, if affects you on a physical level, affects your mind too. Um, Move your body is number two. And this actually encompasses, I'm not just talking about exercise. I'm talking about breathing, even just breathing. How many of you guys are holding your breath right now? Just wanted to bring awareness to that. So your breath expanding and contracting, it moves your lymph system, it moves your um, organs inside, it gives it like a little massage every time you go in. Your diaphragm comes down and it pushes down on your organs and then you breathe and that diaphragm comes up and it pulls them up. So you're giving yourself a little massage every time you do that and your lymph is flowing. 
So the lymph system is your waste removal system. It's like your circulatory system. The lymph veins run alongside the circulatory system and it doesn't have a heart to pump it, so it relies on movement. So that's why you see people jumping on trampolines to move their lymphatic system and their lymphatic fluid. And then you see um, people talking about stretches and massage for clearing the lymph system. So moving your body in any way that you can really, walk, taking a walk, um, doing gentle stretching, all of that is really therapeutic and you don't have to push yourself too hard. You don't have to do um, running or jogging or elliptical. You don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to do the things that you might think you have to do. As long as you're moving your body, it could even be lying on your bed. At some time I had to do that because I couldn't walk so I was on my bed doing stretches. And that's good too. So wherever you can start, it's important to start there. Detoxify your environment is number three. This also is broad, uh, encompassing a lot of different areas. So this would include detoxing, um, getting chemicals out of your life. Chemicals um, including pesticides and preservatives and food colorings, um, they, and heavy metals as I mentioned yesterday, anything that when accumulated in the body, it interferes with normal cellular function. That's my definition of a toxin. So um, I would say organic foods, I would say, um, when your budget allows, buying things that are more naturally produced. So, for example, if you, I would stay away from like the Glade plug-in air fresheners and I would go for a, a diffuser with essential oils. Something like that instead because those Glade plug-ins have BPA, they have um, phthalates, they have different things that interfere with your hormone production because they mimic hormones in the body and then your body says, oh, I don't need to make my own. So it's just very um, important to think about all the chemicals that you're getting into your life and which ones could be affecting your health. Um, fragrances are a big one too. I mentioned that with the Glade and the hormone mimickers, but the fragrances themselves give people headaches and rashes. So think about your environment and how to detoxify it. Number four, heal with herbs and supplements. And um, <coughs> number five, love yourself and others. And six, indulge in your life. I want to um, go into a little more detail on all of these. So I went through those quickly, but I'll go into detail. This is cool. Um, I just redesigned the logo for Take Back Your Health. Ivaro is um, a branding and marketing company and they connected with me last year and said, hey, we want to help you rebrand your company. And they're actually exhibiting in the hall so you can talk to them. They did an amazing job with this. They changed our logo shape. It was like more of a circle squiggly and now it's a hexagon and it fits with those six steps. So um, eat nutritious foods, move your body, detox your environment, love yourself and others, heal with herbs and supplements, indulge in your life. And we chose gold and um, I just, I love it. It's really beautiful and it's really showing um, the six steps and it's a nice symbol. And we actually, the same roommate that I'm doing the cleanse for right now, she's a jewelry designer. She's amazing, she's very talented. She used to design in um, stores like Urban Outfitters and Banana Republic would pick up her designs. And so she created this um, necklace for us and she made a few different designs. That's what you guys are seeing out there on the table. So for me, it's really just something that I can wear every day and be connected with these, this lifestyle and remind myself to take these steps every day. So we, um, we made them for you guys too if you want to look at them. Alrighty. This is step one. I'm going to go into a little more detail very quickly through these slides and then I'll take questions um, in the end. So this is... Step one, eat nutritious food. Strengthen your body and build it up is really what this is about. A lot of people automatically turn towards a cleanse when they think they need to get healthy and they eliminate nutrients, major nutrient groups. And I think that can be very damaging for some people. I mentioned my roommate was healthy so she could do that. She could starve her body and lose weight. But if you're chronically ill, it's not a good idea because your body needs nutrition. So what you need to do is be a little more strategic and you can eat nutrient dense traditional and superfoods. You can add certain foods without a lot of calorie, but they have more minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants per calorie. So you're not necessarily gonna gain weight by eating more food. You're gonna gain nutrition by an energy by adding foods that have more nutrition per calorie. You also wanna go organic. This is one step that I didn't really believe was making that much of an effect on me. And then I recently cut it out and it's actually become something that I wish I had done a long time ago because it's very subtle change 
but it's things like headaches, a little bit of like dry skin. Um, I had some nauseousness. I had some fatigue after I would eat certain things that I knew that's been, I know that has glyph glyphosate on it because I know that they spray that crop. So I, it was like GMO crops are heavily sprayed with glyphosate. And I thought, well, I can let it in every once in a while. But glyphosate is actually really toxic um, pesticide that California just classified as a carcinogen. And um, Monsanto tried to sue them to take away that classification. And California stood its ground, thank God. But, um, but you do need to think about organic and GMO foods cannot be organic. They aren't because that's the point of gen genetically modified organisms. So they can withstand a lot of pesticide spraying on them. Um, they modify their genes so that they either produce their own pesticide, like soy. The soybean oil is actually from a genetically modified soybean. And when the oil comes out in the plant leaves, it, it's its own pesticide. Um, they splice the gene with a, 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 a nightshade plant. And so it actually is a poisonous oil now. And that is actually um, antimicrobial. So when you eat soybean oil, you are sterilizing your gut. When you eat pesticides, you're sterilizing your gut. Pesticides are meant to kill pests. They're, they kill life. They kill life forms, small life forms that aren't very strong and can't withstand these chemical dowsings. So um, organic is important for that reason. You want to stop sterilizing your gut. You want a healthy gut ecology. And if you're taking probiotics but you're not eating organic, or if you're eating kombu drinking kombucha or sauerkraut for the probiotics, but then you're eating or non-organic food, you're eating pesticides that are working against those probiotics that you're trying to put into your stomach. So organic is important for those reasons. Um, local, seasonal, I think is also important, but not so much in the beginning. It doesn't matter so much about those. The first two are the most important. Don't eat foods that work against your body. So this is the other aspect. First you wanna add foods that really work with your body and support it. Then you wanna take away the foods that work against your body. So allergen free, I told you my story about the allergy elimination diet. Um, what happens is that um, over time our body is trained to react to certain things, um, certain foods. For example, peanut oil, they put those into vaccines. And so when your body um, takes a vaccine, the vaccine, I'm not gonna go one way or the other with vaccines, but I'm just gonna tell you the science. Vaccines, um, are meant to create an immune response. Vaccines are there for the purpose of stimulating your immune system. That's what they're meant to do. They wanna stimulate your immune system so that with, with agents that cause that reaction so that your immune system cells will come to the site and take care of those things that were just injected and create antibodies to them. So they put live virus, they put um, aluminum, they put different adjuncts, ad, ad, I forget how she pronounced that yesterday. They put, um, preservatives, formaldehyde, and they put peanut oil, and they put, um, there's egg white protein in there, and there's sometimes there's even, they have to grow the um, virus on, they actually use aborted baby feet, human baby fetus cells to grow virus on, and it's a big business. Um, uh, Planned Parenthood sells, unfortunately, it's a very difficult topic to mention, and it's very heavy, but they do sell these aborted fetuses to these labs to create these vaccines, and so, um, those, all those things injected into your body create an immune response. And it may be helpful, I'm not gonna say my decision on vaccines, but basically it's there to create an immune response. So if you're putting peanut oil into your body, your immune system, in that way, your immune system is going to create an antibody to it, and you're then going to be allergic to peanuts. You can look at a chart and see peanut allergies skyrocketing at the same time as the vaccine schedule went up when they inserted peanut oil into the vaccine ingredient list. So, Allergen-free for those reasons, that's one severe example, but there are other reasons. Wheat is actually not a GMO crop, but it's heavily sprayed with glyphosate because it can withstand it, and it helps the crop grow more thickly and be more productive. So they spray wheat with glyphosate. So wheat, they're now thinking that could be a reason why we have so many wheat allergies, is not necessarily because of the protein gluten, but because it's just the way that we make wheat in America. We spray it with glyphosate. In Europe, they don't do it, and I've heard countless stories of people who are wheat sensitive going to Europe, and they eat the wheat there, and they don't have a reaction. So allergen-free is important, in the beginning at least, until you can figure out what's going on. I would eliminate every common allergen that you think might be um, resonate with you as something you should eliminate. Then mold-free is another thing. Um, mold suppresses the immune system, mold toxins suppress the immune system. So that's why you see bulletproof coffee back there with mold-free coffee. Every American basically drinks coffee and at some point or other. And um, it's a 
food that is very moldy because they store the beans in big bins in the shade and there's moisture there in tropical climates and it does collect mold. And it's hard to see it because it's a dark bean, right? So um, co uh, coffee is now a highly toxic food, unfortunately, unless you're getting bulletproof or something else. Organic is important as well. So the first step would be organic coffee, then mold free. Um, other moldy foods would include fruit juices actually, like orange juice, apple juice. They basically send, they ship out all the unripe fruit to be delivered to grocery stores because it'll have a higher shelf life. They ship out all the unripe fruit and then they keep all the ripe fruit and they ship next door to their facilities, they juice them, but they hold them in bins for a day or two sometimes. And in that time, you can tell, you know, you've seen strawberries, you bought them at the store and like within a day sometimes it's moldy already. You think, what the heck? Don't ever, you don't ever want to put a moldy fruit into your body. That mold is particularly sturdy and it thrives in our digestive system and it helps contribute to leaky gut because mold sends in these deep roots and it latches onto our intestinal wall and it can contribute to leaky gut. So you do not want to eat a live moldy fruit, of course, um, for that reason, but also because of the mold toxin. So unfortunately, things like orange juice are high in mold toxins because the, mold, the, the fruit sits there and it gets a little bit moldy at the bottom of the bin. They don't care, they're not gonna lose profit on those. So they're gonna dump it all into the juicer together and then you're gonna get the juice. And um, so those, that's important to, to consider mold free. Uh, the foods that you should eat, let's move on to that, that's fun. So the categories of, main categories of foods that I focus on would be fruits, vegetables, protein, superfoods, and probiotic foods. The first line is pretty self-explanatory, um, but let's talk about protein for vegan real quick um, because it can be kind of um, difficult for some people who really want to be vegan, but maybe their type, their blood type is O, and so their body really does better with animal meat. So you just want to be very careful and make sure that you're eating things like the blue green algae, which has all essential amino acids, quinoa, rice and beans, um, and you want to have the, if you can tolerate like a protein powder, maybe a, a hemp seed one that's very pure with not a lot of additives. And then um, if you're going through the animal protein, make sure you're getting organic or grass fed as much as you can. I know it's budget, can, um, it can, it's, your budget can be a deciding factor in that, but maybe you want to eat less. Maybe you just get ground beef, that's the, the grass fed ground beef or organic chicken and just eat less of it and stretch it out over the whole week. Um, Examples of some of these superfoods and healthy foods would be um, fat. We do need a lot of healthy fat, however you choose to get that. Obviously, hemp seeds have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. There's avocado, olive oil, nuts and seeds. Um, and then, of course, uh, on the animal side of that would be chicken fat, if you, or butter, organic, or there's also coconut oil. You guys know, you're all smart. Bone broth and ferments and organ meats, sea vegetables are all kind of these foods that we hear about, but we're maybe not confident enough to go out and get them or make them ourselves. So the reason why some of these are really healthy, let's see, the ferments have live probiotic cultures. They're alive, they're strong, and they're thriving, and they're in their environment. They're in um, a bath of organic um, acids, like um, glycuronic acid and kombucha. Um, it basically sets up the stomach um, and the small intestine as you're drinking the kombucha so that it's the right pH for those probiotics to survive as they're traveling into your small intestine. So yesterday you heard Dr. Bain talking about one of the biggest problems with probiotics supplements is that when you eat ingest them, there's stomach acid right there that is meant to kill off infection. That's why it's so important not to take antacids when you're eating because you want your stomach to be very acidic while you're eating so it kills off any bacteria on that food it's like our body's own natural way of protecting ourselves from foodborne illness. Um, so you want to have that stomach acid, but the, it, kills, it does kill probiotics. So the cool thing about fermented foods is that it's actually, nature's so smart that when the bacteria ferments, it creates all this acidic stuff around it and the bacteria gets very comfortable in that environment. So when you drink it, it survives and then it goes into the gut and it comes in and then it turns more alkaline but um, it definitely is a cool evolution thing that happened over time. It's just kind of a magical thing that nature does for us. So ferments, kombucha, sauerkraut, kefir, yogurt, they're more natural way to get your supplements or your, your probiotics. Bone broth is an ancient way that people would get minerals out of the bones to have like a mineral supplement and a collagen supplement because 
bone broth, it melts down the collagen, um, and it's difficult for a lot of us to uh, synthesize our own collagen to rebuild joint tissue. So bone broth is a good way to do that. Organ meats is a high concentration of vitamin D and vitamin A, so if you're low in those, Sea vegetables are really high in trace minerals and iodine, which we all need desperately with all of the radiation contamination in our environment. Radioactive iodine is a very common mineral to find in the air that we breathe. Um, we are finding it along the west coast of, of California and the United States because of the recent Fukushima um, explosion that happened. So we are getting radioactive iodine. They found it in Virginia Beach. I have friends who have tested down there with their machine, but they found radioactive iodine in different parts of the country. And we think of all the thyroid cancer that we're seeing. Um, your thyroid needs iodine so desperately that it'll absorb radioactive iodine just because it needs it, if you're not getting it from your diet on a regular basis. And your body uses it up so quickly that you need it on a daily basis. And the function of that iodine is, first of all, it's the center molecule in the thyroid hormone. So if you're low on thyroid hormone, you have to consider that that might be a reason why. Um, another thing is that iodine is actually antimicrobial. You might know this or might have remembered a point, a time in the doctor's office where they wiped your skin before a shot with a brown liquid. That's iodine. It's sterilizing your skin. Iodine is um, antimicrobial and it, use, it acts that way in the thyroid. All of your blood filters through your thyroid several times a day. All the blood in your whole body filters through there several times a day and the iodine sterilizes it and it is a, an essential immune function, immune system function, it's part of your immune system. So when you take your thyroid out, you're missing that all of a sudden. But you can also supplement with iodine, you can rub it onto here, you can do everything you can to give your body iodine that's pure and not the radioactive one that you're picking up when you walk outside. So I do supplement with iodine every day. Um, that's in sea vegetables as well, that's why I went off on that tangent a, a little bit. Local seasonal fruits, sprouted beans and grains, and wild animal protein. Um, those are just like, the mo that's like the most ideal diet if you can do it. Um, Superfoods, these are some of the great ones that you can add. I did talk a lot about that yesterday, so I don't want to go into too much detail there. And the method of delivery for all of these, I found that smoothies and salads are a really good entry point for people who aren't used to cooking for themselves. It's just very simple to put everything in a blender, blend it up, or put everything onto a cutting board, chop it, and add it to a bowl. Soups are maybe the next level up and casseroles because you're cooking, but it's just very soothing and easy way to get all of these nutrients into your diet. Move your body and your mind. As I was talking about before, it's moving your body. Movement is all encompassing. Mental movement, this is interesting. So meditation, guided meditation, um, writing, reading, spending time alone. You wanna process all the stuff that's coming into your mind on a regular basis. And, and let it either be stored away for future use or get rid of it if you don't need it. And meditation, writing, journaling, talking to people, spending time alone is a really good way to do that. It keeps it so that you're fo you can be more focused every day and you can be more clear about what you want to be doing every day with your life. Emotional movement, sometimes we get emotions stuck in our body. Um, this is important and it deserves a whole day or week of talking. <laughs> but. Some points would be talk, communicate, and share with the people around you. Cry, speak, yell, exercise, sing, dance, create. Just do what you can to express these emotions and try not to hold them in. Just be more observant of what's going on in your body, in your mind. And then obviously physical movement. I talked about exercise. I talked about enjoying your movement. I talked about the lymphatic system. Also hydrating. This is important because when you hydrate and you give your body the water that it needs, you're bringing the nutrients, the water carries the nutrients to the cells where they need it and it carries waste away. So hydration is a really important part of this movement in your body. Detoxifying your environment. We did go over a lot of this before. Water, um, I'm gonna put this website up on the site later this week and you'll be able to find out what water filters are actually working, which ones aren't what water's in your zip code. I talked about this yesterday. I'll put that link up there um, for the EWG website so you can look and see what's in your tap water and what you're getting into your body. Food, detoxing your food. I talked about non-GMO, allergen-free and organic. Cleaning, when you clean your house, consider chemical-free, fragrance-free. You want your house to be dust-free. Those dust mites carry bacteria and virus. Believe it or not, they carry the cold, vi the cold um, virus and the flu virus and a couple of other things so you just want to and they're, they cause allergic 
reactions in a lot of people. So it may be inflaming your um, immune response to have dust all over your house. Personal care, um, you want to try to go as chemical free as you can. Um, beauty counter, makeup, they're finding toxic heavy metals in makeups. Talk to beauty counter in the exhibit hall, has some really good resources. And Fatco is here, they have great deodorant that's metal free and um, aluminum free. Are there any other skincare over there? No, I think they're the main ones today to talk to. Um, EMF, you want to reduce and protect yourself. This is starting to sound really overwhelming, isn't it? It's a lot. It took me 20 years to get to this point, so it's okay. 17 years. So this is my um, cell phone protector. I use Defender Shield. Um, the guy used to work for Bell Laboratories, the people that actually invented the phone, so he knows what he's doing, and he developed that case. Um, whoops, 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 whoops. Okay. Uh, cookware. Oh, the other thing about the EMFs, they make laptop pads too. How many of you guys sit on your couch with your laptop right there next to your ovaries or your prostate? Don't do that. <laughs> Lift it up with one of those desk things or get a Defender pad for your laptop. They have, the same company has them. Um, cookware, choose the least destructive option for your health. I know it's hard to cook things sometimes without a nonstick surface, but try to go for the kind that's like stainless steel or um, iron, um, what is the iron? What, cast iron. Okay, space, this is another one. Detoxification of chemicals, but also of clutter and things that aren't serving you anymore. So declutter your space, organize, get rid of things that you don't need anymore. When your space is cluttered, it has it weighs down on us. We do feel an impact. Then we need to also work on the planet. Things that I do are affecting your health, and things that you are doing is affecting my health too. So you choose to put Glade Fresh in plugins in your house, and I walk in, and that's damaging my health. Another example would be you choose to spray your lawn with Roundup, which is glyphosate, which I talked about. It's getting into, and I'm your neighbor, it's seeping down into the water and it's getting into our groundwater and then I'm affected. So everything that you're doing, it's affecting me too and everything that I'm doing is affecting you. So we have to take care of each other. We have to be conscious about that every time we make a decision to use a chemical that can be transferred through the air or through the water. Um, we have to stop buying so much plastic. It's putting bioidentical hormones, uh, sorry, that may be not the right term, it's putting BPA, which mimics our uh, hormones, the estrogen in our body, it's putting into our water supply. So every time you throw away a plastic bottle and it ends up in the ocean or in the river or the stream, it breaks down and the BPA is one of the first chemicals that breaks down out of the plastic and it gets into our water supply and then we're drinking this BPA and we're fulfilling our body with estrogen mimicking hormones. So then we're seeing males develop breasts, we're seeing women develop estrogen dependent cancers. So we have to stop buying virgin plastic. We have to use what we have already. We don't need any more plastic, new plastic on this planet. That's why we chose Mountain Valley Water. They do glass, which also, um, there are problems with glass too, but it's not as toxic to our body. So um, trash, think about how much trash you're throwing away, where it's going, it's being shipped to India, it's being shipped to someone, some low income neighborhood's backyard. It's not very nice to do that. Energy consumption, turn your lights off. We're putting, we're burning so many fossil fuels and it's causing our governments to want to develop more nuclear power plants which cause the Fukushima accident like we saw a few years ago which is now putting radioactive iodine onto the west coast of California and causing thyroid cancer. So when you choose to leave your lights on all the time when you leave your house, that's the end result. You get radioactive iodine in your air that you're breathing. Um, energy consumption, that was okay. water contamination, we talked about that, and agriculture, choose organic, choose organic, please. At least non-GMO, because the glyphosate is just a horrible crime against humanity. Detox your environment, again, this is what I was talking about with pesticides. They sterilize your gut, they ruin your digestive function because of that. They interfere with hormone production, they alter immune function, they cause birth defects. They cause cancer, they increase your risk of developing Parkinson's disease, they cause kidney and liver damage. If you're not buying organic or filtering your water, then this is what you're at risk for. This is just some more science about it because I know I can just come up here and I can say chemicals do all this, but this is actually names of certain pesticides that you're getting if you're not buying organic. And a lot of them you'll see, um, 
are banned in the US. Look at this first one. They banned this one in 2004, EU, and it's still in use in the US. It causes birth defects, interference with hormone production function. How many of you guys have imbalanced hormone function and you're being treated for that? Glyphosate or Roundup, I talked about that. It's already in line to be banned in these countries. Canada's already banned it for home use. That would be the Roundup that you spray in your weeds. This one is known to cause cancer. It's on the rise in California and no plans to phase it out. This is the Central Valley up there where you see on a map that that's the heaviest, one of the heaviest sprayed areas of the country with pesticides. And it's buying non-organic produce, it's coming. It's all, whenever it does rain in California, all that pesticide stuff just washes straight into our um, recycled water system, the gray water, and then it comes back and it feeds our lawns, you know, all of that landscaping water. And then it just slowly gets into our environment and our groundwater. Um, I won't go through all these. Neonicotinoids, this is really hard to say, neonicotinoids are the main suspect in the mass disappearance of the bee colonies. They're banned in the EU already. They're still widely used in the United States and they don't have any plans to revisit the ban on this until 2018. So we have another two years of use of this when they have, it's been shown that bees are causing bees to collapse. Pesticides kill pests, they kill insects. Of course, this is what's causing the bee decline, our wide use of pesticides. Um, so I did talk about these. How do you detoxify though? Four channels of elimination. You already have them in your body. Let's talk about getting them out. Skin, sweating, and your skin sheds too. It, leaves, it gets rid of toxins that way. Kidneys, through your urine. Colon, your poop, a lot of toxins come out. Lungs, all your exhale. When you exhale, you're letting go of toxins as well. So you want to enhance your body detoxification any way you can. Um, the sauna is a really nice passive way to detox because your body's just sweating it out. Your internal organs don't have to do any work. Um, talk to Brian, actually the sauna space, he's been doing a lot of research, like years and years of research. He has a database on his website so you can go look at detoxing certain chemicals and how it works and everything. Um, you don't want to put antiperspirant on. You can put deodorant. That gets rid of the smell, but antiperspirant actually stops your body from sweating. So you want to sweat. You want to sweat out those toxins. Enemas, colonics, you can try those if you're very constipated. It strengthens the muscles in your gut. It stimulates them to push when you put water in there. So it'll strengthen those muscles. It'll train them slowly to start pushing more strongly. Cleansing diet protocols, probiotic foods, they help get your digestion moving quickly. Um, they also produce nutrients that help your body detoxify, help your liver detoxify. Superfoods, greens, herbal teas have a lot of, they have a lot of herbal detox teas. I would start drinking one every day. Hydration as well, moves waste out of the body. Mental detox, we talked about this a little bit. Don't put things, don't let things keep coming into your brain that are causing a problem for you, or coming into your life that cause a problem for you. Watching the news, I had to stop watching it so often because it was I had too much stress in my personal life and taking on the world stress was too much for me at one point. Um, you want to process what is coming in and resolve anything that's really bothering you. And then decide what you really want to start putting into your mind. Watch movies that are enhancing your emotional well-being instead of destroying it. Um, emotional detox. Just remember... All emotions are valid, whether you're sad or you're happy or you're depressed or you're anxious. It's all valid, it's all normal, it's all okay, but you just wanna keep moving. You don't wanna get stuck in one emotional state for too long, like the depression or the anxiety. You wanna keep moving and you wanna spend most of your time in a calm, peaceful state. Not necessarily happy or joyful all the time. That's also one of those that we can't have expectations that we should be happy or joyful every day, but we at least wanna be calm and at peace every day. Take care of yourself. You want to love yourself and others. This is another side of the hexagon. So de-stress is a major way to take care of yourself. Go easy on yourself. Let things go. Don't put so much weight on one particular event or thing that's happening in your life. Stop judging yourself. You're setting, we're all setting high expectations for ourselves. It's a lot. It's a lot of pressure that we're under. And I'm still working on this, um, but you just want to make sure that you're not telling yourself you have to be this, you have to be that, and if I'm not, I'm failing, or if I'm not, then I can't be happy, because it's unrealistic. It really is, and it's a it's a lifelong journey. But basically, 
this is another quote I wanted to say. Most people overestimate what they can do in a week, and they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And this sets us up for a life of, of disappointment, really. It does. Because if you're focusing on the next week and all the things that you can't do, then you're going to get to the end of the week and you're going to be disappointed. And it's going to happen week after week after week, where really we should be thinking more long term, going easy on ourselves, and making progress slowly. You want to trust yourself, follow your intuition, and know that everything's going to be OK. Because the only thing, studies after study after study have shown that the real thing that we're all craving is human connection and love. Nothing else matters in reality. If you don't have human connection and love, the money that you have won't make you happy. The job that you have won't make you happy. So that's why this is such an important step. Number four, love yourself and others because that is what we're truly craving is love and connection. So healing your relationship is extremely important with your friends, with your family. Communicating helps us do that and building community relationships and relationships around us helps us do this. It helps us love more, give more love, and receive more love if we are active in this area. And number five, we want to heal with herbs and supplements. This is really an individual thing, so I can't tell you what you should do, but I just want you to know that all of these things are important ones to look at in the very beginning. I have already mentioned all of these in the talk. Um, you want to make sure that your basic functions are working, basic or biological functions. So a lot of people aren't even eating the nutrition they need for basic things that your body is trying to do. Reversing deficiencies is another one. Repairing oxidative stress, detoxification, super immunity because we have super bugs, and energy production. This is what all these supplements will help with. I talked about iodine. I talked about minerals and chelating agents yesterday. I've already talked about all of these. The one thing I want to draw attention to is antimicrobial herbs because those are the things that we are most lacking in our diet. They're things that native populations will be eating on a regular basis to support their immunity. And it was a normal, in, in addition to their diet, they would eat herbs, they would eat lots of um, wild herbs that they would find, and they would eat, um, they would have different things like neem oil. Neem, the neem herb is a plant that is very antimicrobial and it's a very common thing, especially in India and Asian cultures, to consume it on a regular basis. Um, I'm actually, in the Amazon rainforest, they have lots of antimicrobial herbs that they incorporate into teas on a regular basis. So I do a lot of those different things and it's more of um, you know, something that you can do research on yourself and see what's working for you, especially if you have an infection. You can find different herbs that will help with those. And the very last step, the last side of the hexagon is to indulge in life. Remember I said that I was at a point where I thought this life isn't worth it. It's not meant to be this way. What do I need to do? What do I need to incorporate into my life so that my life is worth living? And that's really what you want to start thinking. You want to get healthy because you want to be able to indulge in your life. You want to be able to have fun and you want to be able to enjoy yourself. And a lot of people can't do that because they're chronically ill. So that's what is inspiring them to get well. That's what's inspiring you all to be here because you want to enjoy your life more. So just start thinking, What's happening in my life right now that I hate? And start to move away from that and start doing things that you really love now. The next part of this is that when you're doing things you really love, your body goes from fight or flight mode and it goes into the feed and breathe mode, which is where your body can heal. It puts your nervous system into a state where it can actually heal and repair. It's also called rest and digest. It's kind of fun. It's a fun term for that. And obviously doing more of what you love. I just said that. So that's kind of the cap on all of this, is this is what you're aiming for. When you get rid of the chronic pain, when you lose the weight, when you have the energy, you can do this. This is why it's step six, but it always needs to be in the back of your mind that this is what you're working towards. It's a lot, and how do you keep track of it? How do you fit it into your life or schedule? You really have to make the changes one at a time. You can't expect that you can do all of this overnight, or next week, or even next month. So you just do the one that resonates with you the most, make the first step, and then you go from there. I told you guys before, this, I'm year 17 of this. I started when I was 10 or 11. So um, you want to go easy on yourself, stay present, and take it day to day. Oh, OK. So I'll just go. I'll tell you about this. But I want to take your questions. So 
I, I do, I told you I do retreats. I just want you guys to know that these are coming up. I would love to cook for you guys. I'd love to take care of you for four days and just show you how I live. We, we rent an amazing house, saltwater pool. I bring, I, Brian, I, I've got one of his saunas. I bring it on the retreat. You can detox and sweat. I'll cook for you, I'll make green juices. And it's, um, that, that one is already sold out, the Outer Banks one. That's happening April 21st. So I'm about to fly out to DC in a week and go do this retreat for them there. And then I'm coming back and doing the Palm Springs, Palm Springs retreat. So um, this is kind of a new thing I started this year and it's going really well and people are really loving it. And so I kept the price really low at first so that people would come in and try it and we can see how it goes, how people respond to it. But so far it's just, it's, everyone's so excited. And, and this one is, um, the information's out there if you guys wanna look into it. It is really affordable again so that you guys can Try it out and see if it works for you. See if this lifestyle works. And um, the website there for more information. So take back your health in six steps. And um, I hope that that resonates with you guys. I hope that's helpful. So thank you. I'm gonna take a few questions. We're going into the break a little bit now, so if you need to use the restroom or get water, go ahead, but I'm gonna stand here and take some questions for a while. So she, ha she has Graves' disease, she was asking about heavy metal toxicity um, and other recommendations I might have. Um, I, I don't want to give you like too personal advice because that's more like one-on-one, -on -one. I have to do, look at everything. But um, for heavy metal toxicity, yesterday I did about 30 minute lecture on it and if you're interested in doing that, look into frequent low dose chelation or sweating out the metal. I think those are the two safest ways to do it because uh, they're very dangerous free radicals and so when you're chelating them, it can cause a lot of damage to your body. So you wanna make sure you know what you're doing. We did record that presentation yesterday if you wanna buy it. I forgot to mention that all the video recordings of this whole weekend are available. It's just $49 on the website, takebackyourhealthconference.com. So you could do that or um, we could talk one-on-one -on -one, or you could research frequent low dose chelation. Yeah, step by step, it's important. So, Robin, um, I'm just wondering if you did a full yes. study on the advertising on the work, but your story is very much the same article. How does that change the whole oatmeal level nature of our Right. I have an interesting story about that actually. I get itchy gums sometimes. It's weird, it's not itchy like your skin is itchy, but I had infection, I know, because this is interesting. Um, when I started taking anti, I had my wisdom teeth out, and I had two other teeth out down here because they said I didn't have the matching ones up here, so they wanted to make it even. They pulled it out, they pulled them all forward. I had braces, I had everything. And so I know infection in the mouth can be a huge issue because your blood right there is connected obviously to all your teeth and so any infection there gets right into your blood and it's systemic. So um, I had itchy gums, quote unquote itchy, and I wanted to like, I was kind of like, it makes me grind my teeth because I'm like trying to like, it's not itchy like your skin like I said. So it's, yeah, it's weird but I know I had infection there and it's gone, it's not bothering me so much anymore but when I took, started taking antimicrobial herbs, my whole gums got they got red and then white and then they fell off. And it was like, your body's like, yes, all this infected skin, get out of here. It grew back, 
I'm still going back some of them on two teeth, but yeah, it, it grew back, but. The Good Dentist. The Good Dentist at thehealist.com. Thank you. Any other questions? You're all still sitting here. <laughs> so, all right, well, if there. Okay. That's, okay. Well, that's a good question. A lot of people um, do different things. I mentioned in the superfood demonstration yesterday about different sweeteners you can use, because obviously we don't want to use refined white sugar. Um, it's full of carbohydrate and sugars, but none of the minerals and antioxidants that naturally come along with these sweeteners in nature. So you see honey, full of enzymes, minerals, antioxidants, um, dates, is a natural sweet food and it's full of minerals, iron and zinc. And then you've got um, maple syrup, so high in minerals, especially grade B, unfiltered maple syrup. And then you've got antioxidants in it, that dark color of maple syrup. So sugar sweeteners are meant to come along with healing nutrients. But when we isolate it and create these refined sugars, or when we try to duplicate it with the chemicals, we're damaging our body. So um, you do want to go back to the natural nutrient-dense sweeteners. And it's OK to indulge in those every once in a while, unless you have a very serious medical condition, diabetes. You want to be careful. But in general, those nutrients are really good for your body.